replacement reactions, stoichiometry, and percent yield. In this investigation, we're going to perform a single replacement reaction where aluminum metal and a solution of copper 2 sulfate will react to produce copper metal and an aluminum sulfate solution. So let's look at the materials that we need for this experiment. Here is a list of the materials needed for today's investigation. Use the 50 ml graduated cylinder. Measure all of the one molar copper sulfate that's in the bottom and place it in the 250 milliliter beaker. Record the total volume in the data table. Add some of the sodium chloride to the copper sulfate solution using a teaspoon. The sodium chloride is a catalyst so the exact amount is not important. Stir the solution with the plastic spoon to dissolve the sodium chloride. Cut a 4 by 12 inch piece of aluminum foil. Weigh and record the aluminum foil mass in the data table. For best results, use between 1.4 and 1.6 grams of aluminum foil. Tear the aluminum foil into small pieces and add them to the copper sulfate solution. Note the solution will get hot but not hot enough to harm the plastic beaker. With a plastic spoon, Stir to mix the aluminum foil in the solution. Record all your observations. Let the reaction mixture sit for approximately 10 minutes. Stir occasionally with the plastic spoon to ensure all the aluminum reacts. Prepare the filtration setup. 
fold the filter paper in half and then in half again. Tear a small piece from the corner of the filter paper. The folded filter paper has four curved edges, two interior and two exterior. Gently separate one exterior edge from the three remaining edges until it makes a cone. Place the filter paper cone into the funnel. Wet the filter paper with pure water and push the filter paper down into the funnel until it is flush with the walls. Place the filter funnel on top of the 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. When no more aluminum foil is observed and the copper has settled to the bottom of the beaker, carefully decant the solution into a plastic cup. Use the spoon to keep all the solid copper in the beaker. Pour out as much of the solution as possible without losing any copper solid. Any lost copper will affect your percent yield. Add approximately 20 milliliters of pure water to the beaker containing the copper solids. Stir the copper suspension with the spoon and pour it in the filter funnel. Transfer as much copper into the filter funnel as possible. Use the spoon to help. Add another 10 milliliters of water to the beaker, swirl, and pour the rest of the water and copper solids into the filter funnel. Use a plastic pipette and wash the copper solid with another 20 milliliters of pure water. Also add the water around the outside edges of the filter paper. This will wash away most of the remaining sulfate solution. Any remaining sulfate solution will crystallize during the drying step and add to the weight of your final product. Carefully remove the filter paper from the filter funnel. Unfold the filter paper and lay it flat on several layers of paper towels to assist in the drying of the copper metal. Place the filter paper on a sheet of foil Place the foil on a cookie sheet or pie pan. Heat the copper metal and filter paper for 25 to 30 minutes to remove all the water. Remove the copper metal and filter paper from the foil and allow it to cool a few minutes. Tear away bolt on the electronic balance. Transfer the copper metal from the filter paper to the weigh bolt Weigh the copper metal and record the mass in the data table. This concludes our investigation. Dispose of all unused sulfate solutions and filtrates in a sink with the water running. Allow the faucet to run a few minutes to dilute the solutions. Clean and dry the beaker, graduated cylinder, filter funnel, pipette, and spoon before returning them to the equipment kit.